Hey everybody, Anish Majumdar here, career coach and expert in the hidden job market. So happy that you are here, excited to discuss the question that you see scrolling across your screen right now. Is accepting a no pay raise promotion a good move or is it just totally shooting yourself in the foot? I want to talk about this. I want to go deeper into this. This is a very, very common thing I keep seeing over and over again, especially right now with a lot of churn and a lot of concern amongst employers to sort of like, hey, how can we keep our best talent here? Uh, it, it's, it's on people's minds and it's something that you're often, you have to be prepared for. So I want to walk you through a mental process because uh, every time I've seen a professional try to wing it in the moment, the odds of getting this wrong are astronomically higher. But if you have a plan, a way of thinking about the problem, that's something that you can use forever. So let me share something that'll really serve you in good stead here. Um, if you um, are not already connected with me, uh, I would really appreciate it if you would take a second, hop on over to LinkedIn, pull up my profile. My name is Anish Majumdar. Uh, I'm a career coach. Uh, hit me up, uh, follow me. Uh, every day, my team and I, we're sharing advice, tips, strategies taken right from our experiences with clients uh, who are actively engaged in the business of tapping into the hidden job market and getting faster offers. If you are interested in stuff like that, I would really appreciate it. Um, and let's get into it. All right. So let's talk about um, this situation from the employer's point of view just for a second. Okay. Um, what's going on? There's basically two ways and two reasons why an employer would extend this kind of a promotion. Let's say, okay, you're going from VP to SVP. There's a change in the role, but unfortunately we can't offer you any money. There's really two. Okay. And let, let's go with the, the, the positive angle first. Okay. Of why they, they would do it. The positive angle in, in, in terms of your employer, money is tight, but they respect you. They want to show good faith and they want to let you know that they are serious about moving you forward, keeping you around in the long term. They want to make some kind of a show for you, right? That says, hey, don't leave us behind. We are thinking of you. Your goals are important to us. That's the positive angle. Now, what is the negative angle? And let's talk about this, okay? Um, what's the negative reason why an otherwise credible employer would give you a, na a no pay increase type of promotion. The cynical one is basically they just want to make you go away or they feel like they have tapped out the maximum usable lifespan, if you will, of what you can do. In other words, you are hired as a project manager. Guess what? You project managed the heck out of so many things, right? Uh, over the last couple of years, you've gained management skills. You've uh, gained an executive MBA. You're set. You know that you're ready to, to take a more strategic role, but they don't see you that way. They don't see you that way. They still see you as the project manager that they sort of took a chance on during a hard time in your career. Right? So being cynical, right? They could just be giving you this to say, look, we don't have much to lose. Like, what is this guy going to do? A, he's not going to walk. He's been here too long or she's been here too long. So maybe they're counting on you not walking. Right? It's a big reason, by the way, when instead of giving well-deserved raises, P uh, companies are giving out crappy cost of living increases that don't even co cover the inflation rate right now because they're betting on the fact that you're not going to go through the trouble uh, of going out there and finding a job. Now, if the process of finding a job was a heck of a lot easier, that would be a different thing, right? But for that, you need to go over to LinkedIn, take a look at my headline, grab that link that's there. Again, if you're committed to getting out of this trap. If not, let's keep moving on. Uh, so the cynical one is they just want to make you go, go away. They figure a meaningless ego boost will prevent you from kicking up more of a fuss, right? That's basically it. So the how this applies to you, okay? Uh, no company or rare is the company that is all one, all the other. Many is the company that is somewhere between positive and cynical, somewhere between that. Right. And so, uh, how this affects you, um, is that for many people, the act of going out there and asking for a raise, it feels like you're putting so much of your identity and your sense of self out there, uh, that once you're out there, you get this, you know, kind of counter or offer or what have you from your employer. You know it's not going to do it for you, but you want to save face. You don't want to go back to your wife. You don't want to go back to your family. You don't want to go back to your loved ones and say, I tried, they said no, because that also forces a kind of de decision at you. So there's a kind of alternate, you know, psychological pressure for your ego to save face, right? Um, now, one last thing, okay, 
is let's just talk about it from a from a impartial career perspective. As a career coach, as someone who looks at career journeys, I will tell you the thing that matters in someone's journey is not the job title. It's the scope of what you did, the scope of the role, right? The responsibilities that was there. And most importantly, how you exceeded them, right? What were the accomplishments? What were the successes? So from a, from a, a point of view of does it serve your career, uh, an increase without money may help you if the job title increases significantly as well, and there's a real upside for accomplishment, right? But if, and here's the the, the way that you want to uh, think about this, okay? This is the, the, the thing that is going to answer whether or not you should accept an offer like that in your situation at the time that you're presented with it, okay? The million dollar question is, how much does the job change apart from the title or the money, and what is your upside? If I'm going into um, a higher level role uh, and... I see, look, 30% of this thing is new, but I've been training for some of this. I'm excited. This is, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I know that there's a far better than, than even chance that I'm going to exceed the heck out of these KPIs. I'm going to be looking like a hero right now. If that's the case, what I would want to do is say, look, I'm going to, I, I want to talk about conditionally accepting this, but putting a timeline on this promotion, putting a timeline on a real promotion. I've got things that I can do with it. Now, that's if the job change is significant and you decide to take on the additional unpaid risk of, of performing at that higher level. And everything that you know about this company, the situation tells you that is a risk worth making, okay? The other situation is you're asking yourself this, this, this question and you know what the truth is. You know that aside from a slight uptick in manpower, a, some, some courtesy ego driven uh, changes to the job, it's the same job. So if you're looking at this and it is a promotion that doesn't have money attached and there's not enough of a change in the job itself, in other words, it is basically a glorified version of what you have, you definitely should not accept it. You should not accept it. It's a no. Okay. That is not going to help you. I'm telling you when, when I'm looking, when I'm talking with recruiters, when I'm talking with hiring managers at companies, I'm saying, Hey, what's been working for you? What's been not, what actually made you say no to this person? What made you say yes? That kind of, of BS kind of game, it, the, your, your employer is playing it. You're going to be blamed for it. Okay. Cause what it's going to look like on the outside is someone who's not really interested in rising up. It's someone who's more interested in the, the frou-frou, the fashion. Of, of a career, you know, that's going upwards. That's not a good look for you. And that's not going to go well for companies that you're, you know, organically wanting to, to be a part of, you know, decent ones, ones that are doing interesting work. So if the job doesn't change significantly, don't even think about it. The, the answer should basically be a polite refusal, um, uh, a polite refusal, uh, um, uh, continue on with what's going on, with what you have, with what the job that's there, and immediately start ramping up a job a job search. And you should basically be thanking this employer for giving you the advance notice, okay? Because you going through this process, right, of asking for a promotion, advocating for yourself in this way, getting this response, coming in with a counter, and then seeing the truth of what's going on, right, that they're just this is concrete proof, okay? This is evidence, okay? Concrete proof, they want nothing really long-term to do with you, right? You've got to listen and see the clues that's there. You cannot ignore what is there. Now, in the other one, okay, um, in the event that you're like, yeah, you know, I believe the times are tight or I believe that there's a difficulty in there, uh, but the job is different enough. There's a major upside there. The only way, you still don't want to accept it sight unseen. You never, ever, ever want to accept a, uh, 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 an unpaid increase without some kind of concrete, preferably in paper, concession beyond this. Because otherwise, you're just totally getting screwed. There's no easy way to put this, okay? There's no pathway to your dream job that doesn't include you making more money. There's no third rail. There's no third option, okay? That has to be a part of it. And I want you to take that seriously because that is, you know, it, it, it's part of the self-respect equation. It's, it's part of the advocacy equation. It's not about your personal philosophy on money, right? It's about giving yourself the maximum opportunity to not just get a role you want, but succeed in the role that you want, right? So if that's the case where you're like, look, there's still enough here, what you want to do, okay, is you want to research other roles 
that have a similar level of scope. So with the revised scope, with the increase, maybe you're like, look, this is no longer even close to an operations manager. This is way, way close to a, you know, a general manager or, or a senior level one. So fine, pull up some job postings, pull up some people who currently have that role on LinkedIn, study their profile, study their background, study what's being highlighted there, okay? Go to Payscale Resources, um, pull together, uh, the numbers that you need to, to get a clear sense of what the, the basic scale for that type of role is. And then when you counter, don't counter based on your ego, right? And based on the fact that I really want to get paid, because obviously everyone does, that's not a, a leveraged argument. Uh, frame it from a point of view of, here's what the market is saying this role is. Here's what the, what the, what the accurate, fair, fair market value, fair market value of the role is. That's magic. Okay. And... Here's why we need to start this role at the correct place, at the correct level, with the correct strategic ideas in mind to maximize the odds of success here. You want to frame the change in the role, the change in the money, the change in all of that, not as a, an inconvenience for the employer, but as a way to honor, right? Honor the challenge of what's there, right? If I'm climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, right? It's not it's not a show of confidence for me to go up there in my shorts with nothing, with no backpack, right? It's a show of respect for me to get the, the everything that I need to plan, right? To have exactly what's there, to have a Sherpa, to have a guide that's there, right? The, the way that you prepare, the way that you start something is hugely indicative of whether or not you're going to be able to successfully finish it. That's the way that you want to frame the renegotiation in the eyes of your employer. Again, if they're amenable and they're playing ball with you, they're going to make some kind of a move. Either it's going to be um, rethinking the salary equation, fantastic, or uh, uh, as a second one, you could have a thing which says, look, let's let's have a, uh, uh, a formalized performance review eight months from now, six months, whatever works for you that's most advantageous, that gives you the time to start showing how you're exceeding. Let's have a formalized review. Uh, uh, right now, I don't want to accept... Uh, a title change right now. I don't want to accept any of that. But at that six month point, that eight month point with some preparation on both of our sides, let's get ready to make that change happen. Does that work for you? Now, if they're dealing fairly with you, they will have no problem with that. None whatsoever. If they are BSing you and they're lying to you or they're pretending or they have no real desire or buy-in, they are not going to do that because that's going to obligate them in some sense to move it forward and, and pay you what, what, what you fairly deserve. If it's a no there, go back to square one. They're not serious. Keep things exactly the way that they are. That would be my advice. Ramp up that job search immediately. You have no idea how strong your market worth is. And this goes for almost everyone watching this video. There is an epidemic of undervaluation that is going on here. I see people complaining about lives that are unsatisfactory, bills that are that, that are popping up, but it's not just the fault of the companies. It's people not believing in themselves, not asking more of themselves, and not demanding in some cases to say, look, this is not no longer going to work. Time to stop beating a dead horse. Time to move on into green pastures. If that's you, let me, um, uh, again... Uh, encourage you, hop on over, follow me over on LinkedIn, um, take a look at my headline. Uh, you're going to see a link there for a masterclass. It's about 45 to 50 minutes long. It'll actually show you for free the end-to-end -end strategy that our clients are using to start getting these offers. If that interests you, check it out. Talk soon, guys.